Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Sara from Arab American Association. I am the immigration. And today we will be speaking about community resilience and COVID relief. Um, if you guys have seen me before, or if you guys know me personally, I'm the immigration navigator. And also I have been on the front line during um, our food distribution in April and our ECAP um, distribution as well when we were giving out the ECAP cards. Um, so generally we're here to talk about the COVID relief and the community resilience um, that's taking place. And uh, so this is a really a tragedy that has affected our community um, and uh, it, challenge us, it challenges us all on multiple levels. Families have been challenged to provide basic, uh, basic goods like food for their families and um, for their loved ones. And also sometimes making ends meet is not always easy during these times due to unemployment. Um, so we also know how traumatic this crisis has been for everyone, um, the unemployed and the employed, uh, not regarding uh, just financial uh, status wise, but also um, sometimes we have family members that have been affected by this virus. And this also uh, reflects a very, um, it reflects us, it reflects upon us mentally, physically, and emotionally. Um, not only we're struggling with unemployment loss and the fear of losing housing, but many of us have lost loved ones, unfortunately. Mental wellness is extremely important uh, during the crisis. And today we will be discussing both the ways we have been able to help the community cope with loss um, of resources and the significance of mental health. So if you're interested in uh, supporting our relief work and the services that we offer uh, the community during these difficult times, feel, please feel free to click on the link in the chat on our Facebook Live. And if anyone, of course, has any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the comment box below. So one of the first organizations responding to COVID-19 um, is Arab American Association of New York. And we are about to introduce a small little video. So um, I would like to give credit to Tom. He's our social media, uh, social, social media manager. Eh, can't talk today. <laughs> social media manager. Um, so please give a few moments for the video that's going to be playing in a, in a in a little bit. The last few months have been some of the most challenging New York City has ever had to deal with. The severity of this crisis has shown the Arab American Association of New York that we have a duty to serve not just our Arab American brothers and sisters, but to help everyone we can in Bay Ridge. Over the last few months, our entire staff has proven what they're made of in our fight to keep our community strong through COVID-19. Whether it's helping households who have lost income, continuing and expanding our adult education classes, making sure everyone is counted in the 2020 census, or providing food aid to tens of thousands of families from across Brooklyn, AAANY has risen to this challenge and is out there every day working for our communities. This crisis is far from over, and until it is, AAANY will be there for the Arab community, for Bay Ridge, and for every New Yorker. Okay, so that's our little video. Uh, <clears throat> so we have some of our lovely uh, staff members on uh, with us today, and I would like to introduce... Um, Caitlin, the youth organizer. Aisha is uh, the admin operations uh, team manager. Sorry. And Ines is the human resources manager. Hi, everyone. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Thank you. Hey, Sarah. How's everyone doing today? Great. What do you guys think about the video? Wow. Being that it's the first time we see it, I don't know. I'm speaking for myself, but I don't know about everyone. 
like for my experience, um, it seems like it was yesterday. Um, I feel like, um, like emotionally, I just wanted like to cry, to shout out for the people who were there, for our community, for um, our staff and volunteers. Um, it was kind of like uh, good support from Arab American As Association, like for the community. And we feel like they, um, that's what they needed. Um, بالخاصة <تصفيق> بحاجة إلى أنه مساعدات من هذا النوع فالجمعية العربية الأمريكية ساعدت وكخبرة المتواضعة في المجتمع حاولت أنا شخصيا بأن أدعم الناس الذين لم يستطيعوا بالوصول إلى الجمعية العربية الأمريكية فكان هذا الشيء بالنسبة لي مساعدة ودعم المجتمع الذي موجود في بيرج سواء العربي والغير العربي من جميع الجنسيات والأطياف أميزين أميزين um, I'll speak for myself, uh, being on the front line as well. Uh, we've been there since like April since the, or March even, can't remember. I think March we were closed, but April, we were there uh, giving out the boxes, helping our community members, just like Inas has just mentioned. And we got to experience, we had like a very physical and um, live experience of how these how the virus has affected our community members, um, whether it was an effect like on their financial status, like I mentioned earlier, if they've lost their job, sometimes our distributions are really uh, making, even if it's like a small change in their lives, they're, um, you know, it's just a good feeling to know that we're helping others. Um, let's see. How about you, Katie, since you were there with us also, do you have anything uh, to share? or to tell like the, our audience about? Sure, yeah, it's, it's strange to see those photos because it feels like a lifetime away, even though it was only like four months ago. Um, mm -hmm. But starting in March and having the first time being, meeting my coworkers, being under those circumstances in the beginning when uh, we didn't know all of the details of how this um, virus affects people and just seeing um, the staff and also volunteers just really come through for the community. It was really um, inspiring. I feel like in any crisis, they say, like, look for the helpers. Um, and then the people in the Arab American Association of New York were also being the helper. So that was good to see. Right. And I think it was, it's really great to, you know, to have the, for the fact that we just had helpers just stop by and they're willing to help their work they were willing to risk their own lives and um, help our staff members distribute the boxes when we were very low staffed in the beginning it was just maybe uh, maybe four or five of us I don't remember how many exactly but um, I think that was really important that definitely um, gave us a positive vibe it gave us positive energy to actually um, look for look forward to every day you know coming to the office and actually uh, distributing. Yeah, 100% that people just showed up and were like, hey, how can I help? And then kept coming week after week until we exactly. had like a and big Sometimes our helping. numbers of volunteers just increased that sometimes we don't need all that help, but it was still, you know, a great thing to see. 100%. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to move on. Let I just want to ask a general question and feel free to answer whoever wants to answer. Why were we there? Why did we choose to wake up in the morning and say, today I want to go and help? Um, why did we make this, this, this decision? OK, so let me answer from my experience, my personal experience. Um, during COVID in, in March, I was stuck in Saudi Arabia for about two to three weeks. and me watching the news about New York City and how crazy the number were 
I just like I was watching it. I was so scared for my family, so scared for my for my loved ones, so scared for everyone. When I got the chance to come back, like I was wishing to come back so I can do something to help the society, to help the community, to help people, you know. Once I came back, um, I was really relieved and happy that I was back and that I had a conversation with uh, our executive director, Marwa Janini, and we were trying to figure out some ways to, to help the community. And it was just like crazy. We had nothing at that time. It was like the beginning of like the mid-April, beginning of April. And then we started um, receiving funds and then that's how it started. We started like very small with like, just like Belady gift cards and then we were like, okay, so somebody has to be in the office. I was like, I volunteer to be in the office. I can be in the office every day. Um, I knew it was it was dangerous for me, myself, for my family, for, you know, um, and I just like, I wanted to be there. I felt like somebody had to step up and, and, and do something. So I'm really honored that I was working with, with such an amazing team and I'm honored that I was working. And I am working with the Arab American Association and we were able to actually like, um, make an effect and actually help the community at, at the time that it was really tough for everyone. So Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm like, I'm amazed. Like I, I was like watching the video and I'm like, oh my God, we really did that. And, and it feels like long ago, but it's still, it's really amazing. <laughs> I can't even like <laughs> say, you know, it was amazing like, I'm really thankful that we were there. And I remember Aisha used to come in very early in the morning. I remember sometimes like I'll come in early, but then I'll find you there like, and I'll ask you, what time did you come in? You'll be like, oh, maybe like eight o'clock. Yeah, uh, and I was like, and sometimes I'll tell me you haven't even been sleeping because just thinking about all the planning and thinking about like just the whole setup is. Right, you know, it was it was during Ramadan, um, you know, the schedule Ramadan. Was, like shifts mm -hmm. and like somebody had to be in the office. So I was like, okay, let me open the office. And honestly, I enjoyed every single day. I we we had an amazing team, Sarah. Like we didn't really man, like we didn't ask anyone to be there. We we didn't make it mandatory. It was never mandatory. Everyone came. Mm -hmm. Everyone volunteered. Even staff were volunteering. So it was amazing to see such dedicated people being. Um, we were all like standing, organizing everything, and we were all like on the same page that we wanted to help and, and serve the community. I'm I'm really honored. I'm I'm really happy that we were part of it. That's great. Okay, so um, let's ask, uh, I just wanna ask this question. So how did uh, AAA NY first respond to COVID when it first, like at the very start of it? Um, so I'll, I'll be the Arabic speaker for the community right now. I shall be Jama'a tafham al-Arabi and Jama'a tafham al-English. So how did the community, حاولت مساعدة المجتمع بالنسبة لأول ما بدأ موضوع ال الفيروس وال والمجتمع كيف كان محتاج لمساعدات وكيف خسروا أشغالهم في ناس كمان عوائل كثيرة لم تستطيع دفع الإيجار فال بعد ما شفنا إنه كثير من الناس ووصلتنا رسائل ووصلتنا إيميلات بأنه الناس محتاجين لمساعدات غذائية ناس محتاجة لمساعدة مالية وناس محتاجة لمساعدة معنوية ومساعدة نفسية فأول شيء عملنا بأنه نقوم فتح الجمعية مع أنه قمنا بإغلاقها كاملا عشان أوامر من الحكومة بس في نفس الوقت حاولنا نحن بنتبع القانون بأنه يكون في نظافة ويكون في الماسك أو الأقنعة أنه تكون موجودة وملبوسة من جميع ال المتطوعين والموظفين وكمان المجتمع اللي بيساعدوا والتباعد الاجتماعي هذه كانت أول خطوة عشان نرجع إلى المكتب بصورة رسمية فبدأنا بمساعدة المجتمع بتوزيع الصناديق الغذائية كانت عبارة عن صندوق يحتوي على وجبة الأفطار ووجبة غداء ووجبة عشاء قمنا بتوزيعها تقريبا كان في الصناديق بما يقارب كم صندوق عايشة لو تذكري معي 22 ألف صندوق قمنا بتوزيعه لل... وكان يعني وإذا للآن نقدم الصناديق حتشوفي الناس لسه جايين أكثر بس إحنا إن شاء الله بنوعدهم بنحاول بالمزيد في كمان مساعدات الكروت الغذائية في كمان 
بلدي السوبر ماركت الموجود مقابل الجمعية كمان ساعد معنا في أنه بجاب كروت غذائيا تسد كمان بعض جوع أو رمق الناس الموجودة الذي كانت تجي في الجمعية العربية الأمريكية فهذه كانت كمان من المساعدات ومساعدات كروت مالية كان أجاءت من الماير أوفيس وكمان من الماير فند فحاولنا كمان أنه تكون في توزيعات في نفس الوقت فإن شاء الله أنه بيكون في كمان أشياء أخرى بس بتكون فيها كمان بنحاول أنه نعلنها موجودة في معنا في الفيسبوك بتكون موجودة كمان في الجمعية بحكم أنه احنا فتحنا في بداية شهر جولاي ففي أشياء كمان أخرى أنه الجمعية بتحاول أنها تساعد الناس اللي بيجوا على الجمعية في السوشيال سيرفيسز معنا مختصة في السوشيال سيرفيسز بتعبية أوراق الـ Unemployment وهي للناس الذي خسروا أشغالهم آه هذه كمان بنعملها للمجتمع اللي خسروا أشغالهم وكمان للإيجارات مساعدة الإيجارات اللي نزلتها الحكومة الأمريكية وكمان إن شاء الله بإذن الله إذا في أشياء بنحاول الجمعية العربية بأنها يعني تأنونست للمجتمع إن شاء الله عن طريق الفيسبوك وعن طريق الموظفين الموجودين <تصفيق> Um, we started basically when when we received a lot of complaints and a, a lot of requests from the community. The first 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 project was distributing Beledi gift cards, and that was like the start for us. And then we moved into um, the, and the Beledi gift cards was uh, supported um, or funded by the Islamic Relief, and that was for Ramadan for also like COVID relief. And then we continued with the food boxes for about seven weeks. So basically, this is how it started. It started by people demanding the services. Um, even though we were already like closing the office, we were working remotely. So this is exactly how it started. People asking for services and us trying to respond. And thank God, it was like the first one coming and it was just like basically the start for everything that we were able to do. Awesome. Thank you, Aisha and Inez. Um, so also, <clears throat> Can you just like explain a little bit about our cash uh, distribution? So cash distribution, um, we received a fund from um, New York um, NYIC, New York um, Immigration Coalition, and we received money from the mayor's office as well. And this was mainly for uh, an employment and then for people who uh, didn't receive the uh, stimulus check. So basically, um, the, the process itself was we, we posted a link on Facebook and we received um, applications and requests uh, by people. And then we compared and filtered who was the eligible based on the category of the funders. And then we moved on from there. So basically, um, certain funds, we, it was like only for unemployed people who lost their unemployment and weren't able to receive their unemployment um, insurance. And the other one, was for people who didn't receive stimulus check. And we had a lot of undocumented people um, and a lot of international students who we were able to aid, even though it was a fraction, but it, at least we were able to do something. Um, the work within the association, we created a committee who would call people, uh, screen them, um, make sure that we are granting everyone the right amount. Um, and then basically um, allocating a day where everyone would come and, and pick up their cards. Okay, and um, are there any other COVID relief projects that um, AAANY will lead in the future? Um, as I mentioned before, um, for now, uh, we're still like um, applying and we're still like looking for uh, relief for our community because mm -hmm. they're still struggling with the rent and with the uh, finding job. Mm -hmm. um, um, إذا كان uh, في أي مساعدات بتكون uh, معروضة على صفحة الفيسبوك وعلى الإنستغرام وكمان um, uh, بعد فتح الجمعية بيكون في uh, خدمات أكثر لمساعدة المجتمع العربي. Right, so basically we are committed and um, to work with the, with the city government in, in like various COVID relief programs. So 
And also we are um, open and happy to receive donations from the community as well. So once we get the resources, we definitely get to move on and continue with the uh, with such programs and such projects. Mm -hmm. Correct. Uh, so, but uh, what kinds of needs are you seeing in the community right now, Aisha? I think Katie would, would be a good person to answer this. Sure. Um, thanks, Aisha. So um, we're seeing a lot of clients come in who are behind on rent um, and who are struggling to afford food and groceries and pay for their utilities. Um, we're also having people come in who are struggling to pay their phone bills and then they're disconnected from accessing other services. We're, we're seeing clients who are struggling to pay for immigration fees that are going up and struggling with um, childcare and healthcare expenses. Um, some of our community, community members are starting to go back to work, but after being out of work for so many months, those expenses have compounded. And if people were living paycheck to paycheck before this, then um, this, this crisis has really um, caused a lot of people to uh, struggle to meet, meet their basic needs. I فقط من من شان بس ترجمة اللي قالته كيري الاحتياجات اللي ذكرتها كيري هي بناء عن الاستبيان اللي نحنا سوينا خلال يعني من 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 أبريل من من بداية أبريل تقريبا إلى الشهر الحالي. So كل الاحتياجات اللي الناس قد قدموها وطلبوها كانت احتياجات للمساعدة في الأجار لأنه تراكم عليهم الأجار كان المساعدة في دفع الفواتير من كهرباء تليفون إنترنت وما إلى ذلك كمان طلبوا مساعدات من شأن العناية بالأطفال من شأن ممكن من شأن حليب أو حفاضات أو ملابس للأطفال وصلتنا كمان طلبات إنه من شأن نساعدهم حتى في مصاريف الدفن لبعض الأحبة كمان وصلتنا بتوصلنا يعني أكثر الـ 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 الطلبات اللي بتوصلنا هي طلبات مادية ونحن للأسف الشديد بالوقت الحالي انتهت معنا الموارد المادية في الوقت الحالي لكن الطلبات لا زالت قائمة ولا زالت موجودة بالضبط شكرا عائشة so I'll just speak I'll speak a little about my position um, right now as an immigration navigator at Triple A N Y. We are um, still screening clients. We're doing virtual um, screenings and um, optional in-person follow-ups. Uh, we still the organization uh, organization still has social services um, this social services program. So we assist people with various kinds of applications, such as the SNAP application, unemployment, also the second round of unemployment, uh, census outreach, voters registration. We still have ESL. Um, ESL is conducting their classes virtually uh, and also our mental health program. Uh, some of our immigration applications uh, consist of DACA renewals, uh, citizenship applications, uh, green card renewals, <clears throat> Uh, I-130s, which is the petition for um, immigrant relatives. Um, so there is a link on our website. If you go onto our website, there's a link in both Arabic and English. Uh, feel free to click on that link if you would like to request an appointment to speak to um, either I, myself, or any of our um, immigration navigators. Uh, <clears throat> so since our fee, since not our fees, but immigration fees have been um, increasing. Unfortunately, uh, people are struggling to pay these fees. Um, it's, it's, it's been very hard for people to maintain their living expenses and as well as um, pay fees for like their citizenship fees, which has no fee waiver option. Or um, sometimes if they're not eligible for fee waivers, they have no choice but to pay. And these fees are a little pricey. So um, fees then do need to be covered along with their living expenses are, um, it could be a little bit of a struggle for some people. Uh, immigration team has been making sure to be there during the pandemic. Myself and the immigration coordinator have been there um, during the distribution 
of the boxes. So I don't know if you guys have seen us, me or her, uh, or any of our team members there. We have been tabling outside and we have been providing information, answering questions to those in need. Um, just feel free to reach us uh, through our Facebook page or through our uh, website if you guys do need any immigration services. So uh, moving on, uh, what challenges have um, have you guys faced uh, during in organizing and providing relief during COVID? Um, I think that one of the biggest challenges has been that every project that we have, every opportunity we have to provide relief, the demand for relief has always greatly greatly exceeded our supply. Um, when we have cash assistance programs, we had um, over 10,000 people apply for assistance when we had about 400 plus, um, when we were able to give cash assistance to about 400 plus families. Um, and we always would have huge lines uh, around the block, as you saw in the video, for our food distribution. And so just the, the scale of this economic crisis, um, has and and the scale to which it's hit our our neighborhood and community has been really challenging, and um, also like every time we organize a project, we have to take uh, public health concerns into consideration and be very meticulous in the way we safety plan, um, because we are serving a lot of elderly folks and we never know who's high risk and. Uh, we just need to be super careful in the way that we, um, mm -hmm. and then in the way that we plan. Yeah, مثل ما um, Katie ذكرت uh, إنه um, من الأشياء اللي واجهناها كثير إنه um, أجا كل شيء في فترة uh, واحدة فالناس محتاجين لكل حاجة في نفس الوقت إنه مساعدات في ال, uh, في الإيجار مساعدات في الكاش مساعدات في ال, مادية مساعدات الإيجارات الأكل حتى اللي هو أبسط شيء إنه أبسط الحقوق فكنا بنحاول إنه نرتب كيف بنرتب هذه الأشياء أو يعني بما يقارب تقريبا 11 ألف شخص قدم على هذه المساعدات و11 وغير إنه ال ال الناس المتواجدين المنتظرين يعني بمسافة تقريبا أربع إلى خمسة شوارع ممتدة والانتظار الطويل فكنا بنحاول انه الناس الكبيرة في السن الناس التي معها اطفال انه كيف نحميهم او لا كيف انه اذا عشان انه كان في وقت انتشار الفيروس بحيث انه الجميع يكون محمي الجميع يكون محافظ على التباعد الاجتماعي فكان فكنا بنحاول بقدر المستطاع ان احنا بنساعد الناس بانه يكونوا في صفوف متباعدة وأنه نطمن الجميع بأنه الجميع سيحصل على صناديق الجميع بي بنحاول بقدر المستطاع أنه الجميع يحصل كمان على المساعدات المالية وشيء من هذا القبيل فالموظفين اللي كانوا موجودين والمتطوعين اللي كانوا موجودين فأتمنى أنه كمان أنه نحن نذكرهم أو نشكرهم بالاسم وكمان الالكتد أوفيشالز اللي كانوا موجودين البورد ممبرز ف يعني حاولوا كمان معانا بأنه يكونوا متعاونين ومتساعدين في هذا الأشياء شكرا إناس um, Thank you also Katie So uh, what about the rent relief program Is there any updates about that Anything you guys want to mention about it Sure So the state government had released a rental assistance subsidy program and we um organized a, a group of youth and the youth from our um, our summer program and also the front desk staff and our social services staff to help people apply for this assistance because uh, the online application was only in English and the paper application was not released in Arabic. And so there were a lot of barriers to people um, who are, um, uh, to whom English is their second language to applying for themselves. So we um, organized people to 
help people to apply and also to try and spread the word because the program was only, the application was only open for two weeks. And so we wanted to make sure that our community members knew about it and had the chance to apply. صحيح ومن شان ترجم كيري هي المسؤولة عن اليوث بروجرام فخلال الفترة اللي كان فيها المساعدات الحكومية من شان مساعدات الرنت أو المساعدات الأجار كانت كيري وبرنامج الشباب بقيادة كيري وتام بقيادة كمان الفرند داسك اللي هم الستاف تبع أو الموظفين تبع الجمعية اللي بيشتغلوا في ريسبشن كلهم كلهم يعني خصصوا وقت بسبب ضيق ضيق البرنامج والوقت المخصص كلهم خصصوا وقتهم تجاه هذا البرنامج من شان يساعدوا المجتمع انه يقدموا بسرعه لانه كان الوقت ضيق ف كانت كانت تعبئه البرنامج وتعبئه الابلكيشن كانت خلال اوقات محدده خلال وقت محدد فكيري هي خيمت على باب الجمعيه هي وتام وكمان بقيه الموظفين خيموا على باب الجمعيه واشتغلوا بس بتعبئه الاوراق ومساعده ال الكميونيتي من شان يترجموا لهم الاشياء ف سبب اميزنج فيري جود ثانك يو كي ام كان يو جايز شير اني اوف ام اني اوف يور سكسس ستوريز اور فيو سكسس ستوريز ذات يو ماي هاف هيرد اور ذات يو ماي هاف اكسبيرينس بيرسونالي ام في كثير من قصص النجاح الذي واجهناها صراحة في في الأيام الصعبة اللي في توزيع الصناديق أو في المساعدات المالية والغذائية اللي قدمناها كما نعرف إنه يعني بروكلين أو نيويورك عامة فيها الكثير من الناس الذي هم مهاجرين فأحيانا كانوا يظنوا إنه هذه المساعدات لا لا يستحقوها أو لا يمكن أن توصل لهم فاحنا حاولنا بقدر المستطاع انه توصل لكل شخص موجود، كل شخص محتاج بغض النظر عن الاوراق التي معه، بغض النظر عن دينه، بغض النظر عن لونه، بغض النظر عن جنسه، فبنحاول بقدر المستطاع انه هذا الشيء بيكون موصل بالضبط للشخص المطلوب، فكانت بعض الاشياء انه انه مره انا رحت مره انا انا وعايشه عشان بنعمل دليفري في في نساء وفي عوائل لم يستطيعوا الجي المجيء الى الجمعيه وكمان كان في نساء مع الاطفال موجوده في البيت وكان في نساء في الشلتر فاحنا خصصنا يوم كامل بانه نذهب ونوزع هذه الصناديق والمساعدات يعني فرحه الاطفال وهم نازلين من الدرج وبياخذوا الصناديق والام يعني بتخرج من نفسها عشان بتساعد دعوه كمان لنا لما بنجي بنعمل بنوزع الاشياء فبتشوف الفرحة الموجودة في عيونهم يعني أكل أعتقد هذه من أبسط حقوق الإنسان أنه يأكل ويشرب فبتشوفي أنه كيف الأهالي نزلوا والأطفال وكمان رحنا إلى ملاجئ عشان النساء الذي والعوائل التي لم تستطيع المجيء إلى الجمعية العربية فحاولنا كمان أن نوصل إليهم فكان فرحة الناس والأطفال الموجودة بالنسبة لي هذه أكبر قصة نجاح ممكن نوصل لها في في قلوب الناس. So hard uh, touching. شكرا إناس and thank you Aisha also. So um, are there any other types of COVID relief um, that we have been able to provide? So yes, um, we actually were able to provide different kinds of relief. We started with the food and grocery gift cards, and then we moved into providing laptops for our adult education program, And which I want to highlight that we are still open and they are still receiving applications, and we are working remotely, and the, um, the classes are being virtual. Um, and then also we were able to distribute face masks we were able to um, distribute the prepaid cards as we mentioned, and also our immigration and social services continue to be um, existing during this tough time. Um, also, we were able to provide mental health um, help through the phone. Uh, we were also um, able to uh, keep in touch with our youth program and youth um, within the community, and they were able to um, come and talk about their experience and to find someone or somewhere where they can um, talk freely. 
and I think um, Katie would be able to highlight that a little um, a little bit and also like um, I would like Katie to talk about um, the, the her experience with the screening when when she was um, calling people and and screening them to see if they were qualified for uh, the previous cards and I, I'm, I'm sure she has some success stories that she would like to um, share and I would be translating for her. Yeah, sure. I'll share some success stories in English. Um, so we were through our cash distribution program, we were able to help over 100 undocumented families. And so um, in families in Sunset Park and um, Bay Ridge who were unable to access things like the stimulus check or unemployment um, benefits because of the the um, because of their immigration status, we were able to step in and provide relief, um, particularly one family who um, there was a single mother who was undocumented and um, had um, four children and was really struggling to um, make ends meet. And I was also dealing with um, some health issues. We were able to step in and provide them at least a little bit of um, a relief for um, during this difficult time when they had been um, ex excluded from other programs. So one of the statistics that are present in the society that does not include the benefits of the unemployment or the benefits of the stimulus um, the federal check, which is the stimulus check, which is the people who are the people who are not have the status, who don't 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 have the uh, حاليا يعتبروا غير قانونيين لكن um, بوقت الكوفيد ريليف بوقت الكوفيد 19 اقصد um, ما كان عندهم uh, وسيله انهم يقدموا لانهم كانوا غير مؤهلين بنظر القانون فالفند هذا والمساعدات الماديه اللي حصلنا عليها فعلا اثلجت صدرنا انه كنا قادرين انه نوصلها لبعض هذول الاشخاص اللي ما بيقدروا يقدموا على فود ستامز ما بيقدروا يقدموا على ان امبلويمنت ولا بيقدروا يقدموا على رنت اسيستنس واشياء كثيره ما كانوا قادرين يقدموا عليها فانه بتقدر تعطي كل اسره على الاقل 1000 دولار كانت حاجه افتكر انه من من اعظم النجاحات اللي واجهناها خلال البرنامج هذا لانه مثلا واحده من القصص اللي قصد قصتها كيري انه ست undocumented ما عندها اوراق عندها اطفال ومش لاقيه كيف تدفع الاجار كيف تدفع الفواتير ولا كيف تاكل اولادها ففعلا كانت يعني كان شيء جميل انه نكون وسيله لمساعده هذول هؤلاء الناس وهذول الاشخاص لانه هذول بالذات من بين يعني هذول بالذات كانوا يعني بالنسبه لنا اولويه لانه ما كان عندهم اي اي موارد اخرى فهذه واحدة من ال success stories اللي كنت حبيت كيري إنه تشاركها معنا فالحمد لله اللي وفقنا إنه نسوي هذا الشيء ونحن فعلا نشكر كل الأشخاص اللي ساعدونا من ال funders من ال من ال community اللي جاءوا وتطوعوا معنا من الموظفين اللي خاطروا بحياتهم من شان يساعدوا المجتمع من الإدارة نفسها اللي كانوا مشاركين في التقديم لهذه النوع من المساعدات وبعدين بإدارتنا أولوا من بعيد وشكر خاص لمروة جنيني التي وإن لم تكن قادرة على أن تكون بالخط الأمامي إلا أنها كانت داعمة لنا بكل خطوة من خطواتنا فالحمد لله الموفق يعني ولو كمان uh, كما ذكرت في السابق um, I would like also to uh, recognize the people who helped and um, كانوا في الفرونت لاين ممكن ابتداء من الاور بورد ممبرز انه الاستاذ حبيب جوده والدكتور احمد جابر الدكتوره ليلى فرحات زينب بدر اذا جينا لل كمان اجل السناتور جورناديس اند ذا اسمبلي وومن ماتيلد اند اولسو جاستن برينن ذا كونسلمان um, the volunteers اللي كانوا موجودين uh, shout out for them هو ريبورت uh, روبير ويوسف عمر امين نظام um, بيت ايمن سلمى وكيليان uh, وكمان الستاف اللي مش موجودين اليوم اللي هم سامي uh, يافا تام نينا خلود وميس 
فهذا شكر كبير كبير جدا لهم and thank you so much for all for everyone was there Yes, thank you all. And the best, you know, I think just one thing I like to point out is that the fact that it was in Ramadan, it made us feel like, you know, we're actually doing something that's good. Yeah. So um, that was amazing. Thank you all. So just to wrap it up, um, our next guest will be Sandy Lulu. Uh, she'll be joining us um, from NYU Langone Health, and she works closely with uh, AAA NY in our mental health work. And today she will explain the significance of mental health during COVID. So this section will be in Arabic. Uh, stay tuned. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, and it's Sandy Lulu. Can you hear me? Before. Can you guys hear me? We hear you, yeah. Sandy. Great. I want to make sure I've been having some connection issues all morning. السلام عليكم اليوم حبينا نحكي معكم بموضوع الصحة النفسية أو خاصة بهالأوقات العصيبة أو الأوقات الصعبة اللي عم نمر فيها كمجتمع بشكل عام زي ما عم نشوف إنه الكوفيد 19 فيروس ما بي ما بيميز ما بين جاليات أو أجناس يعني هذا الإشي أثر علينا كلياتنا بشكل كتير مباشر فحبينا نحكي معكم إنه كيف الضغوطات اللي آه اللي عم تنتج آه أو الضغوطات اللي عم بتأثر على الصحة النفسية آه والأبعاد اللي عم نشوفها هلا بالنسبة لكوفيد فهلا كلياتنا عندنا نوع من القلق أو المخاوف آه منخاف من المستقبل منخاف من الأشياء اللي ما عنا يقين فيها ما منعلم بالغيب فما منعرف إيش بده يصير بالنسبة لهذا المرض وبنفس الوقت عم نتجاوب كرماله بأشكال مختلفة ففي ناس عم عم تأخذ ال social distancing أو التباعد الاجتماعي بشكل حرفي وبشكل جذري إنه فعلا ما عم بيتواصلوا مع الأشخاص ما عم بيحكوا أو بيطلعوا من البيت مثلا يطلعوا يمشوا أو يطلعوا يشتروا أشياء فعم بتأثر على نفسيتهم بشكل كبير إنه عم بيصير عندهم نوع من العزلة أو الاكتئاب أو حتى نوع من القلق المفرط ف آه... نشوف إيش بدي أحكي أوكي سو so, بالنسبة للقلق ما هو القلق؟ آه هلا هو الشعور بالتوتر حيال الأمور التي تحدث حولنا أو توشك على الحدود ويترافق تفشي فيروس كورونا اللي هلا عم نشوفه بحالة عامة من عدم اليقين ما عم نعرف شو عم بده يصير ومن الطبيعي إنه يصيبنا نوع من القلق وفي بعض الناس كمان من العزلة والحجر الصحي اللي عم بيصير ومن الخوف حتى في ناس خسرت أهل إلها وحبايب إلها في ناس خسرت شغلها والأوضاع الاجتماعية والاقتصادية ضعضعت عندهم فهذا أثر على صحتهم النفسية وحتى صار عندهم نوع من الاكتئاب فلما ما نعرف إيش بده يصير من المستقبل هذا الشيء زي ما حكيت بيولد نوع من القلق والاكتئاب والأعراض بالنسبة للقلق والاكتئاب مرات بنشوف إنه بتماثلوا أو بيكون في وج... شبه ما بيناتهم فبيأثر هذا الشيء على أفكارنا إنه كيف بنشوف الدنيا ممكن نصير نشوف الدنيا بشكل سوداوي ممكن نفقد الأمل أو حتى ما نعتني بأنفسنا بيأثر القلق والاكتئاب على نومنا على أكلنا على طريق تعاملنا مع الآخرين أو حتى نظرتنا للمستقبل فكتير مهم إنه نفكر كيف ممكن نتعايش مع هذا الشيء بشكل ايجابي ف اول شيء اللي هو الادراك انه يعني ندرك انه احنا ما بنقدر نتحكم بكل شيء عم بيصير انه ايش الاشياء اللي انا ممكن اتحكم فيها كشاحد حالي واساعد اهلي واولادي والمجتمع بشكل عام فمثلا اني اضلني اعمل الاشياء اللي اللي حكوا عنها انها مفيده مثلا غسل الايدين لبس الماسك او الاقنعه لما اطلع يكون في تباعد اجتماعي ما بيني وبين الشخص اللي امامي اذا رحت مثلا اشتري اغراض 
يكون في ست اقدام ما بيني وبين هذا الشخص افكر انه اذا بدي بدي اعطس او حاسه انه بيسعلي جاي كيف ممكن كمان اوقي الاخرين من هذا الشيء احكي مع اطفالي مثلا مع الاهل ممكن الاشخاص اللي معرضين بشكل عام لاخطار الكورونا اللي هم الكبار بالسن او عندهم نقص المناعه نحكي معهم اكثر على ايش الاشياء اللي هم بامكانهم يعملوها ليساعدوا حالهم بشكل مباشر كيف ممكن اتعامل مع الافكار السلبيه فالافكار السلبيه كثير بتاثر على طريقه تعاملنا مع مع الحياه اللي احنا فيها او مثلا على اتخاذ قراراتنا إذا عم بفكر أنا بشكل سلبي ممكن قراراتي كلها تتماشى مع هذا الشيء وأنغمس بهاي الأفكار السلبية فمثلا بدل ما أحكي لنفسي هاي هاي الظروف كثير صعبة وخلص أنا زهقت ويأست أصير أفكر إنه كيف ألاقي طريقة إني أحول فكري إنه أحكي أنا واثقة إنه إن شاء الله رح نتجاوز هاي الظروف إن شاء الله آه هذا إشي بنذكره ما بنعاد آه نفكر بهاي الطريقة لأنه الكورونا ما رح يضل معنا إلى الأبد إن شاء الله يعبي لأقول علاج أو نلاقي طريقة إنه نقدر نتخطى اللي إحنا فيه وإن شاء الله نوصل لكيف كنا قبل تعزيز الإحساس بالأمان آه عن طريق التثقيف إنه ما ننجرف وراء الويب سايت اللي ممكن تعطي أفكار آه يا اما تكون خاطئه او كثير فيها هلا طبعا سيتر عربي معلش <تصفيق> انه فيها افكار غير صحيحه عن اللي عم بيصير مع الكورونا فكثير مهم انه نلاقي الويب سايت او المصادر الموثوقه فيها انه نعرف انه في وراها ناس عم عم فعلا عم تعطينا المعلومات الصحيحه هلا التواصل احنا بني ادمين زي ما بيقولوا الجنه من غير ناس ما بتنداس صح فلازم نلاقي طريقه انه نتواصل مع الاخرين هلا اذا ما عم نقدر نتواصل وجها لوجه نفكر انه مثلا في فيس تايم في جوجل هانج اوت في زوم في ايميلز في مسجات في تليفون ممكن نستعمله او ممكن انه نتواصل مع الاخرين في اماكن مفتوحه نروح مثلا على يكون في تباعد اجتماعي نتواصل مع الطبيعه كمان مهم انه نحافظ على الروتين اليومي الصحي مثلا انه عم بوقت معين ونقوم بوقت معين، حتى اذا ما عم نروح على الشغل او ما عم نروح على المدرسه، روتين كثير كثير مهم لينظم طريقه فكرنا، طريقه تعاملنا، طريقه انه ما نضلنا سهرانين طول الليل ونايمين طول النهار، لانه هاي لما نحس حالنا ما في تفاعل مع الحياه اللي احنا عايشينها ممكن هذا كمان يعزز او حتى يقوي الاكتئاب او الشعور بالتوتر. نفكر بالحفاظ على الهدوء او كيف ممكن انا اذا كثير ضايجه او كثير عم بقرا معلومات عم بسمع الاخبار مش ملحقه اشياء سلبيه عم تجيني كيف ممكن انا انظم حالي انه اوفر لنفسي مكان انه في هدوء لاتامل لا ممكن اعمل ستريتشنج او التمديد اريح اعصابي اريح جسمي ممكن استعمل هذا الوقت الهدوء للروحانيات اتعبد او افكر باشياء ممكن تساعدني اتخطى المراحل اللي احنا فيها مرات الواحد لما يقعد بينه وبين نفسه ممكن يلاقي طريقه انه يلاقي نوع من السكينه او الهدوء التحلي بالايجابيه مع الاخرين خاصة هلا مع الوضع اللي احنا فيه مرات عم نسمع مثلا في ناس ممكن تلوم فئات معينة انه على اللي عم بيصير هلا مع بكورونا او بالاوضاع اللي احنا فيها فكثير مهم انه نتجنب الحاق الوصمات بالاخرين في المجتمع فاذا حدا مريض او اذا حدا عم عم بسعل مش شرط انه مع كورونا انه ما بدنا ما بدنا انه خلص نطلع اذا حدا ما له شغل ما له شيء انه هذا خلص بني ادم 
بنشطب وما ما بنحكي معها ابدا يكون عندنا نوع من الصبر ونوع من الرفقه بالاخرين نفكر كيف ممكن انا كبنت كست في الجاليه العربيه او بهاي الجاليه ممكن انا اكون افكر كيف بدي اتعامل مع الاخرين كيف بدي ممكن اعطي من وقتي اساعد بحملات اللي عم تعملها الجمعيه العربيه او الجمعيات الاخرى كيف ممكن اساعد الناس مثلا اذا عندي جار كبير في السن ما بقدر يحمل اغراض ما اضل انه خلص انا ما بدي اساعد حدا ما بدي احكي مع حدا لا افكر اوكي لازم اساعد اللي حوالي لانه في كثير دراسات بتشير اذا انا عم بتواصل مع الاخر وعم بساعد الاخر انا كمان عم بساعد نفسي فنفكر ب... بانسانيه آم... وهذا هذا الشيء بيساعدنا يعني آم... اذا بنتبسم للاخر عم نعطي صداقه فما بالكم اذا عم نساعد الاخرين طبعا بدنا ناخذ الاجراءات والحيطه والحذر بالماسكس والتباعد الاجتماعي وغسل الايدين وهي الاشياء زي ما حكينا وقت للتفكير والتامل هلا آم... بيعرف انه الحزن اللي ممكن الناس عم عم بتحس فيه هو استجابه للظروف اللي احنا فيها ومرات هاي الاستجابه مش بس بتكون بالمشاعر بس كمان بالسلوكيات فنفكر احنا كيف عم نتفاعل مع مع الظرف الحالي هل انا عم بلاقي مساعده لنفسي طبعا المساعده ممكن تكون مساعده ماديه مساعده مساعده طعام مساعده ألاقي حد يساعد في دفع الأجار البيت أو مع الأطفال بس كمان نفكر بالمساعدات الأخرى اللي هي المساعدات الطبية أو المساعدات للصحة النفسية فمرات الواحد بيكون كثير مضغوط مش عارف مع مين بده يحكي ممكن حاسس إنه أهلي مضغوطين معي صحباتي مضغوطين معي فلمين بدي ألجأ فنفكر إنه مع مين بدي أحكي فممكن الواحد يحكي مع ال مع حدا بالكنيسه، مع حدا بالجامع، ممكن تحكي تليفون مع مستشار روحاني او مع مستشاره للصحه النفسيه. في بالجمعيه العربيه في خدمات الصحه النفسيه في عندنا هلا سوشيال ورك جديده كمان بنحكي عربي. وعندنا السرية التامة احنا سواء بجمعية العربية او حتى بالمستشفى اللي انا بشتغل فيها احنا مقيدين ومسؤولين انه نحافظ على السرية التامة لأي شخص بيجي عندنا فبنتعامل مع اشخاص ممكن عندهم توتر قلق اكتئاب ممكن الظروف مرات بتاثر على الواحد فمش غلط الواحد يفكر انه مع مين بدي احكي فاحنا بنتكلم اللغه العربيه وبنقدر نساعد انه نتخطى ان شاء الله هاي المرحله يعني ونذكر حالنا انه الظروف اللي احنا فيها هلا مش الى الابد ان شاء الله ان شاء الله ازمه وبتزول وبنرجع كيف كنا قبل بس بهذا الوقت انه لازم نفكر في طرق سليمه انه نتاقلم ونساعد انفسنا ونساعد غيرنا انه نطلع من هاي الازمه. شيء ثاني بس بدي احكي فيه اللي هو كيف ممكن نحكي مع الاطفال على مساله الكوفيد 19؟ يعني كثير من الاطفال خاصه اللي بالسن المدارس حياتهم كلها اضعضعت انه بطل في روح للمدارس، ما عم بيشوفوا اصحابهم، روتينهم كله تغير احنا الكبار كثير تاثرنا بهذا الشيء فما بالكم الاطفال اللي ممكن بي بي غير الواجبات المدرسيه يمكن في منهم ما زعلوا على هذا الشيء بس زعلوا اكيد على التواصل الاجتماعي على انهم يشوفوا اصحابهم يشوفوا معلماتهم يكون في نوع من اللعب مع الاخرين الاطفال الاخرين في الكلاس او في المدرسه فصار هذا الشيء تاخذ منهم فكيف ممكن نحكي مع اطفالنا على هاي الامور وكيف ممكن نساعدهم يتاقلموا انه كثير مهم فممكن زي ما حكيت الروتين مش بس لانفسنا بس كمان للاطفال نحاول باي طريقه انه نتواصل مع اطفالنا نحكي معهم نشوف كيف نفسيتهم هل ممكن نعمل فيس تايم جروب لاصحابهم يحكوا معاه 
او اذا في جيراننا مثلا ممكن نروح على البارك كمان نعطيهم المعلومات على ايش هو ال انه كيف ممكن يساعدوا انفسهم انه بغسل الايدين الماسكس التباعد الاجتماعي ونشرح لهم ليه من غير ما نهول ونخوفهم نعطي المعلومات الصحيحه لانه الطفل مهم انه يحس في نوع من الطمانينه بال بال بالحياه اللي هو عايشها بالمجتمع اللي هو عايش فيه اذا هولنا وخوفنا كثير من غير ما نشرح له كيف ممكن انه يوقي نفسه او يساعد نفسه احنا عم بس عم نخلق نوع من التشويش ونوع من التوتر بس من غير ما نعطيه السبل انه هو كيف ممكن يساعد نفسه وكمان نفكر انه هل احنا عم نخلي الاخبار دائما شغاله بالباك جراوند انه كلياتنا عم نسمع على الاخبار السياسيه والاخبار الصحيه والكورونا وهي الاشياء انه نعطي كمان وقت الهدوء زي ما حكيت قبل شوي كمان بتضمن هدوء المنزل ممكن نطفي التلفزيون شوي نطفي الانترنت او اذا بدنا نحط على يوتيوب ممكن نحط على على مسلسل مضحك او على لعبة نلعبها مع بعض أو على اكسرسايز نسوي مع بعض فنفكر في هاي الأشياء لأنه مرات بننسى أنه الطفل بسمع وبشوف حتى لو ملهي الأشياء اللي عم بتصير حوله هو كتير بيكون شايفها وبتذكرها وإحنا كتير مهم نعطيهم نوع من الأمان Uh, وإيش كمان uh, عبير do you have any questions for me I feel like إني بس عم بحكي من غير uh, من غير أي سؤال أو uh, اتجاه معين uh, كمان إنه نحكي مع الدكتور تبعنا مثلا إذا أنا عم بحس حالي عندي اعراض مش عارفه ايش هي ممكن اعراض تكون جسديه هلا الاكتئاب في له اعراض جسديه مثل ممكن الام الجسد اللي مش مبينه من وين سببها الام الصدر الواحد يحس حاله مضغوط في راسه ممكن يحس عنده اعراض للجهاز الهضمي فمو غلط الواحد يحكي مع الدكتور تبعه ويشرح له او يشرح لها ايش الاعراض اللي عم بتصير لانه احنا كلياتنا عم عم نعاني بس كل واحد بيعاني بطريقه معينه كل واحد كمان في عنده هموم الحياه فيها هموم كثيره بس بنفس الوقت في عندنا احنا طرق انه ممكن نساعد نفسنا لنتخطى هاي الفتره ان شاء الله فما بعرف اذا في عندكم اي سؤال او اذا بتحبوا to give like a quick english version of self care Abir, Aisha, whoever's on. Uh, yes, Sandy, thank you very much. Um, I uh, So I think everything you mentioned is very important, especially sometimes we just need this reminder. Uh, <laughs> So this is not the end and exactly. that we just have to stay strong and um, of course I feel like especially if we have like very, if we have uh, family members that could help and you know help us get through these hard times is also very uh, important. Family members, friends and um, you know people that we generally trust. I think just to, to go over what I said very quickly with, in English, um, it's really important to think about self-care, right? Mm -hmm. Like if we, right now, it, it, we are in a state of a, a pandemic. There is a lot going on. People have lost so much, um, loved ones, uh, jobs, financial security, food security, uh, routine. In, uh, uh, time to connect us Arabs we like to connect we love family we love gather you know, that's what makes us Arabs and that's what I love about our culture is that we're always like together and now this new normal has really caused a lot of isolation a sense of anxiety and a sense of depression for a lot of people for different reasons and rightfully so so talking about self-care 
is something that we sometimes forget. Uh, there's so many pressing priorities that we have to navigate on a daily basis where um, taking time for ourselves sometimes becomes a luxury. Um, and if we're taking care of other people, families, and all these responsibilities, and we're not taking care of ourselves, we're really not, we're really doing a disservice for our loved ones and for our community. So taking time to have a routine, exercise, even if it's a walk around the park for a few times, um, mm -hmm. having a routine in terms of sleeping and eating healthy uh, is important. Being hydrated, drinking water is also important. Staying in touch with people. So, you know, COVID-19 has really pressed us to be very creative in terms of how we connect with other people. So thinking about the, um, you know, the internet and the resources that we have, FaceTime, Facebook, Skype, Zoom, there's so many ways, even instant messages, sending voice messages to each other, mm -hmm. checking up on one another is something that's really important. It sounds simple, but it's really about the connection that we have with people and really reinforcing that. Um, also reminding ourselves that we can, we do not control everything. And I know it's a hard thing to think about. We like to control things and, and the sense of control gives us a sense of like knowing what to, to expect in the future, but no one knows what the future holds. So focusing on the here and now and focusing on what we can do uh, by practicing uh, proper hand hygiene, uh, wearing our masks, social distancing, um, thinking about our health is, is, is important. Uh, leaving the house if possible, if, if we are not at risk in terms of autoimmune issues and or in terms of age and health related issues, it's not a bad idea to get some fresh air. And even if you can't leave the house, opening up the window, uh, just trying to expose yourself to some uh, sunlight is also important. Uh, and not, and not uh, bypassing the, or like, sidestepping the importance of, um, of self-reflection and giving ourselves some time to, uh, to practice meditation, prayer, uh, just reflecting on what's important and reflecting on, on things that, that, are, that we're happy about, sense of gratitude and, and what is it that I'm um, happy about today? Even if it's something this simple, it's important to reflect. Uh, and then I was mentioning also volunteering and supporting one another thinking about our neighbors, thinking about our community and how can, how can we support one another? Um, and then talking to our medical professionals if we're having any symptoms that are just not adding up in terms of you know, our health. Uh, it could be related to stress and mental health. And then also, um, you know, mentioned, I mentioned earlier that we have uh, mental health services at AAA&Y. Um, mm -hmm. And there are other mental health providers in the community that can talk about just adjustment to everything that's going on, um, you know, the feeling of isolation, the feelings of loss. And I, I stress that the fact that we are binded by uh, confidentiality and, and privacy laws. We do not share anyone's information. If somebody comes to us, we do not talk about them coming into for services. Um, so it's all confidential and 100% private, um, which is really important uh, to, to put that out there. Um, so if, if anyone is interested in mental health services uh, to reach out to AAANY, other resources could be calling 1-800, um, actually 1-888-NYC-WELL which is the mental health resource that the city provides and they have over 200 languages. So thinking about the resources and how to access them is, is something that is important for self-care. Um, so I gave a very quick <laughs> uh, summary for what I said in Arabic. Um, and I don't know if you, I know I'm probably out of time, um, but if you have any well. I mean, I'm, I'm talking so fast. Usually I do this in two hours and I'm doing it in like such a short period. But you know what? Mm -hmm. Sometimes a small piece of information can be so helpful for someone. Right. Like I said, it's about reinforcing what we already know. People know this. It's just about a reminder. I'm just like mm -hmm. talking about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sandy. Um, 
And if anyone, uh, anyone in our audience has any questions and would like to ask Sandy, um, please feel free to drop it down in the comment box below. Thank you, Abir. Okay. <clears throat> so um, in the meantime, continuing on to the theme of focusing on mental wellness, uh, our next guest will discuss resiliency and share some exercises to help us cope with hardship. Zainab Tawil is one of our mental health case managers at AAA NY. Um, Zainab's section will only be in English, so uh, this is just a little note for our audience. Thank you, Sara. Um, yeah, so I am the one of the mental health case managers and also the community mental health organizer at AAANY. So um, I do a lot of work around mental health and mental health accessibility within the community and trying to, like Sandy said, spread the reminder that, you know, we have mental health services, that it's completely normal to seek those services, and that, you know, it's important for our community in terms of looking at the intergenerational trauma that we have, you know, the stigmas that we have, it's important that we all feel like we have access to mental health and that it's something within our reach. Um, so thank you, Sandy. Um, so today I wanna to focus more on resilience. So when we talk about the word resilience, we're talking about somebody's ability to get through a difficult or unexpected time like COVID. Um, you know, as Arabs, we've always had to be resilient in one form or another. You know, many of us come from countries affected by war, dictatorships, extreme poverty, occupation, genocide. You know, the, the list kind of goes on and on. And many of our clients that we've been seeing have told us that they've been triggered by quarantine and COVID-19 because it reminds them of painful experiences that they've had back home that like kind of similar isolation that goes with war, like Sandy was talking about, um, you know, the food insecurity, the just level of trauma that kind of goes unchecked and unanswered. Um, there are a lot of parallels there. So basically just trying to say that this pandemic and all the memories it's brought up for people has shown us how important it is to really take care of ourselves physically, mentally, and emotionally. So I want to teach the audience a few quick ways um, based on the Community Resiliency Model or CRIM, um, which is a, psycho a psychology model that was created by Elaine Miller-Cross, which um, basically talks about the connections between the brain trauma, the body trauma, and like emotional trauma and how that's all interconnected, especially for people who have gone through horrific natural disasters or like man-made disasters, like again, like war. Um, and so again, so this model, I'm gonna teach you a couple ways that people can at home use to feel themselves feel, make themselves feel better and more at peace when they're feeling anxious around really like anything doesn't have to be COVID or any painful memories you have. It could be any sort of anxiety or trauma. So like the CRIM model is created by the Trauma Resource Institute, like I said, Elaine Miller Paris, that helps create a trauma-informed and resiliency-informed mindset um, using wellness skills that are based on research on the brain. So the two different skills that I'm going to teach you today are called grounding and resourcing. So the first skill, grounding, is really easy to do. Everyone can do it from home, even the people on this panel. You guys can try it right now. So first, you have to find kind of a comfortable position, whether that's like sitting in a chair, like lying down, whatever. Um, not that I say the panelists should lie down right now, but you know, just everybody get kind of comfortable. Um, and then you want to focus on the way your body like basically feels grounded within the earth and like basically starting from wherever feels most comfortable. For me, I like to do it like in order. So I'll focus on my feet and the way that they touch the ground. And then, you know, maybe I'm like thinking about the way my shoulders are touching the back of my chair. So that's like what I'm kind of doing now to get Zen. Um, thinking also about our legs and how they touch the chair, um, your hands on your lap, you know, thinking about the connection there too, how it's all kind of connected. And then basically if something feels uncomfortable, you try to move your focus or your attention to a part of your body that does feel comfortable. So like I said, my hands in my lap, 
it's not super comfortable because my hands get really hot. So instead of thinking about that, I'm thinking about my feet on the ground, which feels really solid and good. Um, so yeah, everybody can kind of just take a second and see how that feels for themselves. And over time, like as you are focusing on the way your body is feeling in the moment, you'll start to feel kind of like calmer, you know, more aware, like again, less anxious. So it's a really good thing to do if you're starting to feel panicked, anxious, even depressed. It does help, again, recenter your mind and make you feel like you're alive kind of in the present moment. So the second skill that I'm going to teach you guys about is called resourcing. So like when someone resources, they're remembering something, which is the resource that brings them happiness. This can be like a happy memory, a person you really love, a stuffed animal, like a food. Literally, it can be anything that brings you happiness. So basically, we want to close our eyes and start thinking about what our resource is. And you start to think about like the little details of the resource. For me, I think about like one specific memory I have from when I was um, like staying with my family in Seattle still. And me and my cousins, when they still lived with me, we would like make cookies together at like three in the morning. Even when we had school, we would do it like every single night. And so I start to think about that happy memory that I have with my cousins, like how good the cookies were, even though they were like literally just frozen Costco cookies. Like, you know, they were so good. They were all so gooey. Like thinking about the way that me and my cousins would like sneak into the kitchen, you know, like crawling through the hall just to get to the kitchen. Like, so we wouldn't wake anybody how we would like sit right next to the oven and watch the cookies and like thinking about all those little details, it brings you almost back to that moment or to that thing. And you start to feel like a warm feeling in your chest. And so like one thing that CRIM or CRM is very big on is focusing on what happens within your body when you think of your resource. So like I said, I'm, I feel like a warmth in my chest thinking about this happy memory with my cousins who I love so much or like, you know, I think about, or I feel like, um, like my body feels a little bit lighter, like it doesn't feel so heavy in my chair, things like that, that have you feel like there's kind of a shift again in your body and in your mind and noticing how those things are connected. Like Sandy was talking about how our mental wellness is so connected to our physical wellness. Um, so basically when I'm angry or upset, I'll think about my resource to bring me back to my resiliency zone. And the resiliency zone is like a term that we use in this model to talk about the mental space where you feel like you can take on life's challenges like the best. So if we're in our resilient zone, it doesn't mean we won't feel sad or mad like if something bad happens to us, but it does mean that we're able to stay calm and focused if something bad does happen. So the way that we're supposed to stay within our resiliency zone is by using these wellness skills like grounding and resources. And there are six resources um, in total, or sorry, six skills in total, but we obviously don't have time for all of them. So I'm just including the two, but um, yeah, like when we use these wellness skills, we keep our head level and we keep our mind clear. So, you know, if anyone has any more questions about the community resiliency model, you can totally feel free to reach out to AAA and Y and I would be happy to answer them or to do any trainings for people who feel like doing a community resiliency model training would be good for them. Um, and you know, that's it for me. I know I'm five minutes short or maybe 10 minutes short, but, um, I'm really appreciative of the time you guys gave me today and really proud of our community and the way we all came together kind of against COVID to keep each other afloat. So yeah, let's keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Dana, for your, um, your time and for, uh, things you said, Krim, it's going to be a very beneficial technique, I believe. Uh, all right, thank you all. I like to thank all of the audience, um, each and every single one of you for joining us today. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, if you would like to support this kind of COVID relief work, please support us at the following link with a small contribution. If you would like to support a specific um, department at triple uh, ANY, please also mention so. So whether it's immigration, social services, um, a mental health department, uh, please also mention that down below in the comment box or um, in an email or however you choose to do so when providing your uh, contribution.
Thank you all for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your day.